నమస్తే చెప్తున్నా మ్యామ్ నమస్తే వెల్కమ్ ఎవ్రీ వన్ వి ఆర్ డూయింగ్ దిస్ సిరీస్ ఆన్ ఎన్ఐఓఎస్ స్కూల్స్ అండ్ రిలేటెడ్ ఆస్పెక్ట్స్ ఐ ఎమ్ సుచిత్ర హెగ్డే ఐ ఎమ్ అ పేరెంట్ ఆఫ్ ఆరింకో అకాడమీ మై సన్ ఇస్ స్టడింగ్ ఇన్ గ్రేట్ టూ ఇన్ ఆరింకో అకాడమీ అండ్ వీల్ అవిట్ దే సో వీ థాట్ వీల్ స్టార్ట్ దిస్ సిరీస్ టు హెల్ప్ అదర్ పేరెంట్స్ హూ మైట్ హ్యావ్ సిమిలర్ క్వశ్చన్స్ అబౌట్ ఎన్ఐఓఎస్ so ma'am uh, when we say nios school so the usual questions are what is it is it a residential school is it a home schooling group for parents is it for special needs children is it for gifted or exceptionally uh, intelligent children so what is an nios school okay so first of all there is no nios school nios is a board okay Mm-hmm. and it is by far i think a very inclusive board the most inclusive board that i have seen because it can envelop anybody mm-hmm. it can have people of all ages it can have people living anywhere it can have children with learning difficulties it can have exceptional children it can have home school children non school children it can have dropouts it can have so many people that can just come through it it also is inclusive in a different way for example if you have taken commerce and you did your 12th grade and now you want to become a pilot uh you could actually go back and apply for physics as a subject and write that exam and you know now apply for to become a pilot so there is no board until now in our country at least that i have seen that is so flexible for people in even within this flexibility there is more levels of flexibility as in you know how many years you get to complete a course for example right how many attempts you get to complete a course are really very inclusive because it respects that people are in different walks of life uh, because many different many people who haven't been able to complete their education or who have other challenges because of they because of which they cannot do the normal you know mainstream education which is very time bound you know that it helps like for example if there is a sports person that person is not able to go to school every day and stick to like a yearly schedule right i finished 10th grade in one year isn't impossible because what if there are tournaments that year so nios actually gives almost 5 years to complete a course and exams happen every 2 years we will speak about that later but i but it's very important to understand nios is a board mm-hmm. right and uh, then there are schools that can accredit themselves to nios but they're not school having nios they are more of centers of nios mm-hmm. which means that they can uh, take anybody in the area around them to register with them mm-hmm. when you register you are still registering with nios as a board you are not registering with a school or b school but these are centers where there these students can come connect to any mentors or anything if you are providing and write an exam there mm-hmm. that's all mm-hmm. so yeah so nios as a board can be up, can be um you know uh, accepted by parent uh, a student themselves or a school which says we also support nios as a board so now we have understood that nios is a board and schools will be accredited to that board so how is, center yes how is uh, such a school different from let's like, say a cbsc or an icsc school and what are the benefits of an ios so uh, like i said a school can accredit itself to an ios to become a center it is still not a school so the school can be cbsc icsc or state board and they also provide an ios as a choice of board and the school is a center for that board which means the school is still you cannot call the school as an nios school mm-hmm. right so anybody from anywhere can come take admission into nios and choose this as a center so that's one clarification there mm-hmm. now uh, for a school like orinco for example why did we choose nios as the preferred board while we also have state board and you know we are in the process of icsc we still have have nios as a choice board right from the past 8 10 batches everybody is going for nis and in fact people are now joining or going for nis why would somebody do that is the question right and many all over actually you see many people now talking about nis um, because of the flexibility number one second 
it has the possibility of you following any streets. You follow CBSE, you follow NCRT, you follow ICSC, you follow IB, IGCC, whatever you want. Or you don't follow anything also, that's fine. But when you turn 14, you can actually apply to uh, NIOS and start your secondary program. Mm -hmm. Even before that, if you are an unschooler or something, you could have done your OBE, open basic exams, which happens at first grade, third grade, fifth grade, and seventh grade. So that's something that is possible in NIOS. How does it help a school like us? You know, where when you can actually uh, pick NIOS just by yourself as an individual, why would you need to have a school is the question, right? Mm -hmm. So there are limitations of our other goals. One is the start date and the end date of a particular grade, right? Then there is the age limitation that is there. Then there is the uh, lack of flexibility of choosing subjects. Now, yes, your boards are also opening up and you're having subject choices, but NIS is there from 1970s and they always had an opportunity to choose your uh, subjects. And they never had silos. They didn't have art subject, commerce subject, science subject, and you should only be in that group. You could choose anything. And that's one of the things why in Orinco we love it because a math science student can take economics and psychology as his other subjects, mm -hmm. right? Or a child can just drop math science and do business studies, economics, psychology, home science, and English because that's the field in which they want to work, either hospitality or law or business administration or something like that. In a school like Orinco, we are very career focused right from about sixth grade. Everybody, you know, tries to figure out what is it that ticks me? What is it that, what are those passions? How can I convert that into careers? And since you are working on this career focusedness, it's very good to have a board that helps you in that journey. Why would I want to do languages and say social studies or something beyond my eighth grade when that's not what I'm going to focus? Now, many would say, why should I not do it? What about entrance exams? Entrance exams, the curriculum is still eighth grade when that is not the core path. Like for example, uh, CET would definitely need math science till 12th grade, but a design entrance will not need 9th, 10th, 11th, 12th math. It would, be, it would require somewhere up to 8th grade and maybe a bits and parts of 9th grade, which is easily learnable by children. And ha having to have that subject in the board is not important. Mm -hmm. So schools which are having NIOS as an option are having it because of this flexibility. And parents are also choosing such schools because now the school has a lot of time. If you had chosen ICSC board, you have so many subjects because social studies is in three aspects, then you have math, then you have science in three parts and all these things, right? So it becomes for the child, there is no time to do anything else. Mm -hmm. But now imagine with NIOS, you only have five subjects and those five subjects are completely in line with your career. And because it is in line with your career, your internships make sense. Your subjects make sense because you can see it happening. That means you don't need rote memory. You don't need to really learn something that you can't see in the world around you. So it becomes all interconnected in such a way that you're able to find meaning to what you're studying. And you have time now to do all these other things, do an internship, shadow somebody, you know, do a project, uh, do some online course that's in line with your career options. So that way, the time that you get is a lot and there's less stress. Mm -hmm. It's not that NIS curriculum is less. That's not the meaning of it. And NIS math curriculum is similar to a CBSE curriculum. That, the idea is that you have more time uh, and uh, no subjects that are not useful to you on your journey are on your platter. You don't have to really work hard towards something that doesn't make sense to you. Mm -hmm. um, and there is flexibility. I can write an exam every six months. I can finish exams in parts. I can write an on-demand exam. And these are things things unthinkable in our country, which NIOS has been doing from ages. Mm -hmm. This is not new. Yeah. So, and this, this is also one of the reasons why your earlier question, is it for special needs? Why it happens is, of course, a parent with special needs needs time. Mm -hmm. So they will go to a board, which is going to tell them, okay, please welcome to our board. You have now have the next five years to complete 10th grade. And we will allow you to write an exam any number of times. And we will allow you to write an exam every six months. Take your time. Take this subject, learn it for six months, do it, then the next, then the next. You just have to finish five subjects. Right? You imagine that this child can actually now complete education, which is unthinkable in our other, other boards. Mm -hmm. Right? We have to go and stand for language exemption for other boards. And I was right from day one says, take English, leave the rest if you don't want. Mm -hmm. So you have a highly progressive board in our country 
you know that's going that's allowing you to be yourself who you are and continue to do many other things and then you'll not hear stories of you know after sixth grade there's no time to do anything you're just drowned in your studies life skills hasn't happened 21st century skills haven't happened career skills haven't happened there's no time for internships and then corporates are saying that oh we're getting all the students with very good marks and they don't know a thing about how to work you won't have this because right from you know ninth grade or eighth grade this child is pursuing the area of interest mm -hmm. and and picking skills and putting into their kitty right so of course it depends on which school in order to this is our way of life so yes we we really can turn out children that if you're a, if you want to be a designer then you will be a mini designer by the time you're 18 years you're actually employable even without doing the design course to some extent as an entry level at least but other schools might be doing it for other purposes there might be a special needs school that picked nios as its choice of board because of the very reason that i spoke about mm -hmm. there can be an unschooling community which works actually they come together and they do many activities together but they chose nios as their board because that's the one that makes sense to them mm -hmm. there could be a sports school you know somebody that has like 100 students under their wings and they are preparing for badminton championships or whatever it is but they chose nios as a board because it allows them the flexibility mm -hmm. so various ni schools are going to have various reasons why they pick to be that and various ways and methods in which they utilize it mm -hmm. if you see in um, in northern india nis is the preferred board for entrance coaching partnership mm -hmm. so children take nis as their 12th grade board and actually do the entrance coaching for uh, iit je and all of that because it helps them to focus more on that mm -hmm. right and they don't have to focus on like a social studies or some subject that's not making any sense to them so that's why various people use nios for various reasons and that's why i am just in love with this board because i have not seen a versatile board than this mm -hmm. so uh, like you mentioned that an nios school can be for homeschooling or it can be for children with learning difficulties so it can be for exceptionally uh, academically exceptional students so in orinco how are these separate categories dealt with if somebody is coming from being home schooled or if there is a special needs child or if there is an exceptional child so um in the younger years so we are not an nios school per se we have we have accepted nios as one of our boards for 10th and 12th so early years we have our own program running we are affiliated with the state we have icsc also going so we have like a mixture of curriculum that kind of envelops around the child whatever the child is whatever level the child is right special needs were able to only take mild learning difficulties because of the way our ecosystem is structured it's not the board or it's not the study it's just this open expanse that we have there without walls and all that imagine a child with attention deficit we are going to actually you know uh, aid in more attention deficit just because we have so much stimuli going around right mm -hmm. so children who are exceptional also many people think that if you're good in math you need to do more of math that's not what exceptional children need you're anyway good at math can we do something else mm -hmm. unless you are a prodigy like you you really want to do so much math and you are going so fast in it but what you use is just doing math rather than finding out where to apply it Mm -hmm. right so i think orinco gives these opportunities to children as they grow up to kind of grow uh, horizontally you know laterally go grow in many different ways grow as a human being grow as a good citizen grow as grow good in math science arts crafts theater so many things because you are a complete individual then you know just one aspect of yourself right i think that's key and because of that what happens is by the time the child comes to 8th grade we have focused so much on them learning through people places phenomena that the children just have so many experiences and have tried so many things plus because of our skill building programs they've done carpentry they've done electronics they've done mechatronics they have done everything that you can think of they've designed plays they've executed it they have uh, done a lot of community service work they have done so many things that by the time you come to 8th grade you kind of know what ticks you what hap what makes you happy Mm -hmm. right and that's why after eighth grade they do like a one month passion to career program where they figure out themselves connect their passions to a career 
and then make that path, 10 year path, where should I study? What should I do? What subject should I take? How, many, how much money will I need? What entrance has to be written? All of this. That's where NIS fits in very easily because now I know I want to do design. Mm -hmm. If I want to do design, I need to understand human beings. So definitely I need psychology. I need to understand entrepreneurs and business because without having a business idea, I cannot, idea of business, I cannot really design. Otherwise I'll design some random out of the world kind of thing which is not feasible for a business, mm -hmm. right? So I would have, so I, then I decide that, okay, I'll take business studies and economics, right? But some people might say, no, I want to actually design something for households to make people's lives easy. So maybe I'll take home science because I just want to understand this whole world of life, living, you know, the, the daily living things around me. So they might take that. And then you take English as a language because in NIS that's compulsory, right? See, now you have five subjects that really make sense to you. Every day, you're going to do something that makes sense to your career as a designer. And now, since you have NIS, you now have time. So, you'll, you'll meet designers, you'll do internships, you'll try various aspects of design. You'll do so many things that are going to help you in this. So, that's how NIS fits into the picture. Uh, children with special needs, uh, which who are mild, usually we take dyslexics. Uh, who have reading, writing, spelling issues, but IQ is pretty high because here in Orenco also learning, I feel, is more abstract than concrete, academic learning. Mm -hmm. Because if we have a co-constructivist approach. That means most of the time in the class, you're talking, you're discussing, you're figuring out, you're traveling, you're moving, all those things. You barely get time to read that lesson. In normally in mainstream uh, schools, you start with the lesson. Children go to page number 92. Let's start with paragraph one. We never do that because we're talking so much and just unraveling knowledge, which is either what's in the book or aligned to that what is the topic, that most of the time the book goes home <laughs> so that you can kind of read it and figure out. And most children come back and say, oh, ma'am, you know what? Whatever we discussed was there in the book. That's the way of learning. But for a child with special needs, the concrete is important. Mm -hmm. You tell me what I'm here for first, right? You tell me exactly what, because I have problems in memory. I have problems in, say, comprehension. So for me, repetition is the key. So don't add more noise to what I'm already dealing with, right? Mm -hmm. So then sometimes there it doesn't work. That's why dyslexics, it works because high IQ, comprehension is very good, everything. Reading, writing deficits are there. Because that, you can give a lot of coping mechanisms. So that, or sometimes, you know, you just discalculate, like math doesn't work for you. In NIS, you can drop math and you can carry on with life because mm -hmm. everything else is fine with you, right? Yeah, maybe you'll also drop like physics uh, and sometimes you also might have to drop something like economics because it has a lot of numbers, but you can actually figure that out also because dyslexics, it's not just, dyscalculics, it's not about just numbers. Sometimes they get the big picture, but it's just the details that they have trouble in. So it depends on the child. So those kids, children were able to take, were able to take them ahead. They finish their 10, they finish their 12. Um, they do our, um, so we have India's first career focus programs, right? For 11th and 12th. So we have our uh, uh, board preparation, entrance partners for 10 streams of careers. And then we have career toolkits. So they do all of this. So by the end of it, there's no sign of the disability on the landscape at all, right? Because the child has been in such a, comfortable space that they have figured out their own coping mechanisms to to kind of uh, deal with whatever the gaps they were having but it's very important to understand what kind of learning difficulties this child has or special needs this child has what is the amount of help that you need because bangalore is blessed with institutions that help with this mm -hmm. there's a specialized school which follows nis which is only for autism you know two three are there then you have for uh, spastics uh, you have uh, so, Spastic Society has so many groups, you know, uh, cerebral, cerebral palsy or uh, uh, even with the mental retardation. So, there are schools that specify this because it's not just about completing 10th grade. You need vocational training, you need behavioral training, you need speech therapy, you need occupational therapy. So, it's important for parents to think of all these things in NIS as one part of it. Mm -hmm. Our goal is not 10th, 12th. Our, our milestones are 10th, 12th. Isn't it? Our goal is life, readiness. Isn't it? So that we have to understand. It's not about or in code, it's not about anyone else. One, yes, it's NIOS. That is sure. Now, where NIOS? And sometimes you might just feel, let me just do it by myself. Don't school your child. NIOS has 
beautifully laid out curriculum that anybody can do. Hmm. And then contact people like us. Like I help people across the country of how to make NIOS lessons more, uh, you know, um, application based. Because all parents are not teachers, you know, for them to really understand what to do. So I will give you those ideas and we will share or come to Oringo, spend a week, learn with us and go back. But it's very important to understand if, yes, NIS might be my path, but which school, which organization, which community, or just by myself. That is key. If you are having a child with special needs, even exceptionally bright children, what if my child is a prodigy in chess and he has so many tournaments, you know, I might rather not go to school actually. Right, I will finish my NIS any which ways because that's easy because they have videos, they have worksheets, they have answer books, they have everything available on the website. It is beautifully laid out, right? But if my child is um, so, we have a child which we moved to a sports school recently because she was a national level badminton player, mm -hmm. and for her, she needs eight hours of training every day morning, four hours, evening, four hours. I'm so she's doing NIS, but I did not keep her with me because she barely can study for two hours in a day because she's so tired, also. Mm -hmm. Right. I would rather put her in a school which only does sports and then they have two hours in the afternoon which they do subjects and then she'll do it mm -hmm. right so it's very important to understand not only in this regard I think study your child his needs her needs challenges and then decide the course of action because we now live in a very different world we don't have just ICSE school CBSE school state board in fact this shouldn't even matter to you mm -hmm. it should be about what fits into my child's life schedule and needs you don't try and fit into something else mm -hmm. so i would like to mention to the viewers that this is the first video in a series so we will be delving deep into the topics mentioned in this one if you don't understand what constructivist or any of the terms mentioned here uh, i am also a parent so i uh, if you are not from a teaching background, that's perfectly fine. We'll be going into the details of NIOS exams, fee structures, practicals, all aspects in future videos. This is only an introduction or an overview. So we have touched upon some of the topics and we will just go into the NIOS schooling part. How long is the NIOS course or a duration of a course? So um, the secondary course, which is the 10th grade, okay, in the NIOS uh, scheme of things, it's one year. So you register, the, you know, this year, uh, say they have windows, so January is one window, October is another window, whichever window you register, one year from there, you can complete. But my sincere advice to everybody is to not rush and do like that, because you'll only finish curriculum, you'll read it and you'll finish it. I would suggest take two years. You know, the reason for that is if you are adding NIOS to uh, your child's life with experience. So if you're doing business studies, go study about some businesses. Go for a walk, find out what kind of businesses are on your road, you know. Interview some entrepreneurs. Learn from another organization how to make business plans. So in Orinco, we do something called as junior BBA and a senior BBA program. It's a 10-class program. Okay, You actually learn to be an entrepreneur and to set up uh, to set up a business plan and to pitch and present okay mm -hmm. that's such a nice experience isn't it to be able to understand business studies in a totally different way so add these kind of things if you're doing math science add some hands-on learning with it right if you're doing uh, application-based learning because there's so many organizations now at tech is booming now right you have so many organizations then do some internships uh, think about what careers you want to do just like how we do at Oregon. so you when you add all of this that one year is not enough because now what you're doing, you're going out into the outside world, picking things, coming back to your book and saying, oh, wow, this is what it meant. This is what it feels. Plus, you're reading your book and think, and wondering what exactly is this. When you go back seeking it into the real world, it kind of gets reinforced. Mm -hmm. It's a very beautiful way of experiencing learning because, like I said, your 10th and 12th are not your goals. They're not your destination. They're your milestones. Yes. Right? So that's why my personal suggestion is take two years. Uh, 11th and 12th is two years in NIOS. You can register this year, only in two years you'll complete the 11th and 12th. You're expected to take two years only. Even if you complete before you write some exams before and do something, you will not get the uh, certificate. You're supposed to do it in two years and you should also because 
schools uh, abroad and even in India now, when I say schools, I mean higher education colleges, they are expecting that 16 year education, that 12 year education, all of that. There, there are these standards. So do not like hurry. There's no need to hurry so much. Experience that learning. If you take even two and a half, three years also, it's okay. I've seen children uh, doing it. Take the benefit of experiencing the subject and deciding if it's for you. One of the best parts of NIOS, I feel, is that you can choose to drop a subject and pick another subject. So you must have had a child who felt for some reason, I'm a science math guy. But over that year, when he was discovering the world outside, he would think that, hey, no, I want to do something else for which you need psychology and economics. Drop mm -hmm. these, pick that. If you try and plug everything in one year, you're not going to get this opportunity. Right? So it's just make sure that it's low. It's the focus is on learning. It's not on finishing. Um, and that's how NIS works actually. Mm -hmm. So what is the advantage of Orinco Academy over a CBSE or an ICSC school? Because many of the parents I talk to, they want to uh, explore Orinco or similar schools but they are worried about, uh, you know, the tried and tested versus the unknown. Boards are not what schools are. The tried and tested school they're seeing is known for what it does. It's not the board that they find, right? They're having some fantastic schools around us. They're not what they are because of the board. The board gives a blueprint to everybody. And then it depends on what we make out of it. Isn't it? So one... Every school is defined by its own vision, its own mission, its own promises that it makes, right? And, and I like the fact that schools are very clear in doing this. People are just telling, they are very academic. Look at our, you know, results. At our gate itself, you would have seen our top performers. It's very clear. That's what I'm going to focus on. And if that's what helps you, if that's what is your uh, philosophy of education, please go for it because that's what will help you. But we are increasingly having parents whose children are beyond the basic needs. That means that roti kapra makan has been satisfied. Right? Mm -hmm. Now what, what will they look for? What are they going to work for? And the parents themselves are in that stage where I want to do something more. I want to do something beyond. I want to raise my children in, in a very... Uh, to become agents of social change. That's what we do at Orinco, right? Mm -hmm. There are people who say, I want more in life. And I want to experience more. I also want to give more. I'm okay with my child choosing a very non-traditional thing to do. Mm -hmm. But some parent may say, I am okay. What if my child wants to do traditional? Right? There are mm -hmm. also those parents. There are also some parents who say, I want my child to be traditional, but I'm okay. As he grows, we will observe. So they have this opportunity to experiment. They have the mind to experiment. Plus, they're very learned people with respect to how much they've studied the future um, you know, what is going to happen in our future. So there are parents who know where technology is heading, who know how 10 years later is going to look, who know how 20 years, going to, years later is going to look. Even for now, for example, when my son was growing up, 20 years back, 22 years back, I knew that resumes will no longer be looked at. And we have that today. He's 22 and we have that today. There are companies, really good companies, which are only looking at your skills. Yes, resume does matter. It's called a portfolio now. And what goes into the portfolio is respected. It's not just a list of my education. Like I said, education is just milestones. But a portfolio is who I am. I'm presenting this to you, right? Here, I, I'm, I'm a tracker. I'm a painter. But oh, look, I'm also a computer programmer. And as an employer, I'm interested in all of these things that you are because I want you to bring a combination of all these things, mm -hmm. right? So the life has actually changed. And for these people who understand that life has changed, who understand that for children, not only a packet of certificates is required, but a toolkit for life is required, which has skills inside it, which the child can whip out, you know, another set of skills based on these skills. Mm -hmm. For people like that, a school like Orenko will help, definitely. Mm -hmm. For people who respect children as another human being, who needs to be respected, who needs to be heard, who, need, who needs, whose space needs to be respected, right? Who needs to get a lot of resources, who do not want to program their children, who do not want to raise their children in fear 
or scarcity mm-hmm. right if you don't do this this is going to happen uh, if you don't do this you won't get admission no definitely not there were so many colleges opening up right who understand that what's the value of me uh, graduating from such a high university but having no skills versus i'm graduating from a very small university but here i am with like 15 internships in this area they understand the value of it and they and they believe in this that my child can sell himself if he really is skilled mm-hmm. these kind of people would like to come to orinco and also be parents who want to be involved in the journey of their child mm-hmm. who are willing to embark on a co-parenting journey you have seen like we basically are connected every day <laughs> right it's not you and me have all 200 parents and me and everybody connected on a daily way daily mm-hmm. way and we we speak to each other we connect to each other we understand each other we help each other right mm-hmm. and that's the way this community so orinco is a way of life it's not a school it's not a board it's not a you know grades it's not a curriculum all of that is anyway there but this is a way of life so people like that might benefit here what will they get benefit from they benefit from an open learning environment an experiential learning environment an ecosystem of parents teachers children everybody and friends of parents you know the works right everybody wants to do something with that children they benefit from that they benefit from the child receiving several experiences in people places and phenomena like i mentioned before by the time you complete your 15 years at orinco you have lived an amazingly rich life and you have collected n number of skills in every area it's not just academic skills there that's just one tiny part of it right you have it's with people it's with the you know your skills hands on skills that you have picked up so many things that is valuable to families and that if it's valuable valuable and if you know that that's valuable for the child because the child is going to live 20 years later from when he was born 25 years later is the world that he is going to live in until then he has our he has us na to have his back mm-hmm. so that if you want then or inko kind of school helps because we are progressive the minute we learned covid happened we moved online we were not fanatical about we want to use don't want to use because these children need online right now we see that the children are far ahead in some things because of the two years world that they had we are we are actually focusing on that and there are some things that have become extinct some skills that have become extinct so we are actually not doing it so a progressive school which moves with the needs of your child because they are in line with the times is something that orinco can help it uh is nios a recognized board yeah definitely actually india uh, earlier mhrd you know now it's called ministry of education um from there we only had two boards cbsc and nios mm-hmm. so and it's it's a pretty uh, old board that way like i said 1970s and it's the world's largest open schooling system open schooling board uh, used by many many people and they have lakhs of registrations every day and because it's by ministry of education india it is recognized at least in our country in all the courses mm-hmm. however there's some things you need to keep in mind one foreign universities do not really know every board in every country that's why they say uh, you know icsc igcsc or ib is okay and uh, cbsc also because now they know that many students have already gone and now when nios children are applying and all of that in every university i know we have had to first prove to them that here we are and this is what it is and now it's open like australia is now open uh, canada is now open for nios but i remember like the first few children that wanted to go and then there we had to really send them papers and help them to understand that this is by ministry of education and all of that but now more and more countries are opening up because more and more people are doing nios and trying for those countries so that's one thing to remember mm-hmm. second thing to remember is you should know what the other colleges that you are going to apply for whether in india or abroad need so for example there are colleges which say that if you want to do so and so course please do physics compulsory mm-hmm. So if you don't take physics, obviously you cannot do that, right? So that's one thing to remember. Second thing, uh, CISC, that means the ISC board. Mm-hmm. I remember um, they want all exams to be done one shot. Tenth mm-hmm. grade exams, they want all exams one shot. They don't want that semester based and on demand and all of that. They're very clear. Please write everything once and come back. Okay. 
uh, neat exams for example some years back you had a um, report saying you know nios and itcsc private candidates are not going to be allowed for a neat because uh, practicals we don't know whether they're doing or not in IC igcse there's an option not to do practicals so that is there but in in nios you have to do practicals you have 30 practicals each for every subject so that then they changed then they said okay no like and I always can apply. Mm -hmm. So these are very important things to understand. Like there's a subject called Indian culture and heritage in 10th grade. Mm -hmm. That's not really um, acknowledged as a subject by many, by many universities, you know. They do, I have seen children doing also, but there are some. So that's why like in Orenko, we make that 10-year career path, right? That time the children have actually gone to colleges, they read up everything, they know the eligibility criteria. Accordingly, we are able to take the subjects. So that I feel is very important for you to know what next after NIOS, do the relevant, um, you know, checking, then come back and take the subject so that you don't feel that, okay, I missed on something. Mm -hmm. So that's important. But otherwise, NIOS is a recognized board across India. You can write every entrance with it. Uh, you can go into any college with it. Uh, then, of course, the college will have entrance exams. If you don't clear that, then that's a problem. Plus, the college will have their criteria, no, 80% cutoff, 90% cutoff, whatever. That you will anyway have to get. If there are any students who have studied for a few years in CBSC and ICSC schools and then want to join or into academy, is it possible? And if yes, at what grades is it possible? They can join till ninth grade and then they can join in 11th grade. 10th grade, we don't take any admissions uh, because we follow that two year time for 10th uh, grade, which means in ninth itself, they must have started. So mm -hmm. other than that, they can join anytime. However, the earlier, the better because you get so much exposure and you can explore so many things. Mm -hmm. Second is unfortunately from mainstream, when children come, they come conditioned with many things very instruction based they're fearful they're fearful of hierarchy they manipulate because that's the only survival skill over there there's bullying happening either you're doing or you are you have faced it uh, children really don't do things because they love doing it they do it more because it has to be done uh, they have already figured out that i can just wrote memorize and i can finish an exam why should i really you know, waste time in all this co-constructivist approach and <laughs> talk so much in the class and all of this. A teacher's presence I have seen makes children feel like restricted mm -hmm. when they come from mainstream, which is unheard of in Orenko. You love being around it. In fact, my room is like the Adda. You, you'll be there because you, you want to chill out in school, okay? That's unheard of in mainstream schools, right? So I feel to make them unlearn these conditions, conditioning that has happened takes time. And mm -hmm. so the older you come, the conditioning is more and more and more. There are some children, however, there, I think they just belong to Orinco and they were somewhere else, so they just come and quickly, you know, catch up. But then some take time to unlearn. Parents need time to unlearn because they're so used to a particular way, right? Like not being told what's happening so the amount of transparency we have with parents it startles parents sometimes it's like too much for them to take it um anytime we give feedback in mainstream schools when you get feedback you become defensive you kind of become offensive to your child beyond that defensiveness mm -hmm. and then you hit hit beat shout screech whatever it is because it's embarrassing to you you're not bothered about oh my child is doing this and i need to help but you're more bothered about the embarrassment because that's how you're made to feel also, right? Or I think schools are not really making people feel like this, but they've attached it to that. Mm -hmm. Complaint agya to something really big has happened, right? But in Orenko, it's we're co-parenting, just like how you would tell your husband, wife, we would tell you what happened today, right? So I think that time taken increases a lot the more later you come into Orenko. So the earlier, the better. But yes, if you want to come, and you're willing for this change, you're willing to make this change, um, then yes. So we had a child join seventh grade one and a half year back in the pandemic. Highly stressed parent, highly anxious parent. But she's somewhere new knowing because the place for my child. Child came, child transformed within a year because he was somebody that I think was made for Orinko. But for her, it was very difficult. Every time we would say something, she, 
PTMs were so defensive and our teachers were like, well, why is she taking it to herself? We just wanted to help the child. It was like that. But I nurtured, nurtured, nurtured. I think last month she came and she said, I could see a visible change in her, in her physical self, actually. You know, her, her whole body was relaxed and she came and she sat and she said, I'm such a changed person. I now want to see my son's journey and I want to aid in that journey. It's not about me and I have understood. It took her two years. Mm. We are willing to be with you for those two years, but are you willing to give yourself those two years? So that is very important. So you can come anytime, you can join anytime, but the journey is something that you should be willing for. The philosophy of being child-centric, child-led, to respect children, um, and yet to be firm uh, and to be able to design their day and life in such a way without their notice uh, so that they also do not fall out of the system, right? These are important things to understand and that's why maybe you need to also invest some time in understanding the philosophy, in living the philosophy. You know, many times I send out, you see, no, I send out so many requests uh, and there are simple things. The other day I sent out a request for find us class names. Do you think we can't do it? We can, but just by involving yourself in that, you learn something. By coming for a workshop, you saw a different grade. You saw different children and you say, oh, in ninth grade, this is how the children turn out. So second grade, if my child is still, you know, not doing something, it's okay. They will change out. So that involvement is required. We do understand you as parents will be in your life journey and you must be busy and all of that. That's okay. We'll figure out a way around it. But yeah, when can you come to Orinko? Anytime. How you come to Orinko is more important. And what are you willing to give in order to belong to this community and to make it the way of life is important. Another uh, one of the common questions I get from parents is uh, we want to try Orinco, but how will we know that it's working for us? And if it's not working, can we go back to a CBSC or ICSC school? Yeah, you can come to Orinco from any board. You can go from Orinco into any board. Why am I saying this? Because our children have gone. I, I know that they can comfortably go. <laughs> But um, I would say that most people know why they want to come and they're here because of a series of things. Number one, they uh, have a lot of information on the web, which is real, which is true. Like if you see our website, as a parent, I'm sure you're not going to tell me, Chetna, why did you put this? This is not true. Mm -hmm. Everything there is the truth, right? Our YouTube videos, everything is the truth. Our Facebook page, that does happen. And that's why it's there, right? We're not... Um, kind of constructing something that doesn't exist, right? So I think they know a lot already. They've seen a lot. They kind of know it. Then when they come, they spend a lot of time with me. Sometimes we speak for hours, right? Because it's not about us, the child coming into school. It's about you as a family connecting to this family, you as a family giving us this child and we returning 200 back to you <laughs> because they all become your children. Uh, and what happens what is the thought process how do you raise children your willingness to actually transform as a parent as a human being right and then of course the child that happens and then you end up speaking to other parents you end up uh, speaking to uh, other um, you know teachers or people in the community so you do get an understanding from that then you move on to your child actually having an immersion program we have a one week immersion program that can go on to two three four weeks also if you want if that's what can make you understand whether this is a place for you or not mm -hmm. and if that happens i think by the end of it 80 to 90 percent you're very sure that this is the place for you so i don't think the problem is is orinco the place for me and can i go back to icsc cbsc school? actually it's not the board at all it's the whole feeling, okay? Uh, we sit on the floor. We eat on the floor. We say prayers before each class. For some people, this doesn't work. This doesn't make sense, right? For some children, maybe they want bigger groups. They want more competition and they want something. Maybe that doesn't work. But I feel all of that you would have realized in these days because this much of interaction is happening with you. We never follow up anybody for admission. So you will not get our call saying, please come, come, come. We will not force you. There are people who have taken years. And one of the classic examples, when Orenko started, two years later, we had one child come for first grade admission. That time it didn't make sense to them. 
because they were scared. You know, how can I put a child in such a radically thinking school? The child went to another school, completed till 10th grade, 11th grade, she came back. Mm -hmm. Okay, and the parents said from the past five years, since she was in eighth grade, I knew I have to come back to Orinku, but I just didn't know if eighth is okay, ninth is okay, because I was not having that courage. But now in 11th, I'm back, right? And that's the child that, you know, recently um, uh, won in a design competition and she's going on to become a designer and all those things. So we waited for 10 years, isn't it? So, and we're okay with that. We're okay with waiting for you because it's finally your decision your willingness to be in this community. I would just like to add that uh, my son, he says, why do we have holidays? No, I don't like holidays. Can you please call up my teachers and tell them that uh, please take classes even in summer. I mean, you know, I don't <laughs> like Saturday, Sundays. I keep yeah. telling him that, you know, you may not want holidays, but at least let the teachers get some rest. <laughs> come back prepared and more energetic for the coming week. And yeah. that, that's when uh, I felt relieved that, you know, I have chosen the right school for him. When right. he says, I, I hate holidays, that, that gives me a sense of uh, calm and relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think because that comes from the fact that actually even the littlest of little children ha have shown me that they can understand what's happening with them. Mm -hmm. And they can decide for themselves. And so they know that there is so many things happening around for me during the day. And at home, I don't get that exposure because that's impossible for us, right? How can we create, you know, a, a, a workshop every day, you know, art classes also, toy workshops also, theater also, that is also happening. Learning also in subjects is not really direct, like teaching talk and talk, right? Mm -hmm. So that's also happening with me. I get my friends, I get my lunch, snack, you know, amazing things for me to share, eat. And then in all of this, there's this, there's this feeling of belongingness. I feel belong to this place. Even the building makes sense to me. And I think that's what they appreciate. That much of exposure, exploration is happening to me. And I'm respected in this place. I'm loved in this place. And I think that's why they feel left out when they go outside of here. They want to come back. I have my, the children who passed out also, every time they have vacation, they come. And this year, there's a child who moved, uh, last year, there's a child who moved to UK. She bought uniform. I said, why are you buying uniform? When you when you know you have to go, she said, no, every year, two months, we're going to come back. He'll come to school that time because that's the only condition on which he's willing to go abroad, right? And I'm okay with that. We have children like that. Whenever they come to Bangalore, they're in school, right? And so I think that's the blessing that we all have, that we're able to create a community for children, which is their very own. Yeah, even when I was growing up, I don't remember when I was in second grade, having a friend who is in sixth grade, you know, hearing about friends, the older friends every day, you know, he did this today and he was doing this yeah. in the bus. So that kind of, uh, it, it's almost like he has an elder sibling. So I hear yeah. about the older students very often. And that kind of bonding is also very reassuring. And yeah, I, I uh, these kind of, these may be smaller things, the way that uh, students come to teachers and you and they tell that, you know, he did this or he did that. And then instead of telling, okay, this is right, this is wrong, okay, go sit in your place. The students are encouraged to think about their own emotions and, you know, yes. why do you feel this way? Uh, life, yeah, life is all about conversations, isn't it? Yeah. It's about conversations, it's about reflection, it's about realizing. And then I think we all inherently know what to do. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we are unable to throw light on it because we're carried away with, an, with that emotion at that point of time, you know, or with our preconceived notions about something. It mm -hmm. could be just that. And a conversation can open up something for me. And then I grow up to be an individual that constantly, consistently took my own decisions because mm -hmm. nobody told me what is right or wrong. They just led me in a direction of discovery. Mm -hmm. That is very important for children. Otherwise, it's so easy to take care of children. No, we can just give a set of instructions. Mm -hmm. But that's not how human beings function because very soon they'll become dysfunctional. Mm -hmm. And that's what we see in the world around us. Yeah. We have enough and more number of dysfunctional people <laughs> who are earning lots of money, but they're still dysfunctional. And that's not something that depicts a good quality of life, good happiness index, uh, you know, it, it, that's not what is life 
first of all mm-hmm. right it's not money yeah it's a lot more than money so and when you are i think inherently happy from within then money can also buy you other happinesses mm-hmm. but only money can't buy you happiness <laughs> even for me as a person whether he will perform in je or neat it's more that uh, yeah iq has its place i mean experiential learning maths and science uh, and seed germination or counting money all these things have their place but that emotional intelligence that empathy that observing around him and coming to his own conclusions that i feel even in workplace it will be more beneficial in terms of the interpersonal skills or just managing your own emotions correct correct and that's why if you, your child is reading a lot if your child is ahead if your child is you know you think is exceptional very bright and all these things please come to our info because leveling is needed mm-hmm. i have seen children 5 years old reading so much and everything parents are also very proud and all of that so they think that they'll come here and they will discover more and more and more it's not about that it's about you be, being a very balanced human being and i have seen empathy is low your observe because your observation about the world is low you're always in your book mm-hmm. right and your hands and legs are not doing what your brain wants because your brain is always in that zone of imagining and constructing this story in your mind right mm-hmm. and so fine motor skills is an issue so many things i have seen that and children are also snappy because they don't want to move away from reading that book mm-hmm. i don't want to do anything else i don't like coloring i don't like dance i don't like this i don't like that because i want to read this is not good you know while the child may actually read and read very very big books and you might be able to feel good about it or show off about it the child may be able to rattle all the facts from that book because obviously they are having memory right so they will but what are you going to achieve out of this nothing right so it's important to raise balanced children and secondly like you said as adults i don't think at orinco we we really want to direct any child to iit je or anything else mm-hmm. okay these words always come up because i think we are obsessed as a country <laughs> with this but i think to anything however i have seen that when a child turns back and tells us no i want to do iit which is one of the most difficult things to crack in our country we don't want him to say oh i studied in orinco that's why i cannot Mm-hmm. right we are alternative in our methods in what we expect in how we test right or in how we deal with children mm-hmm. we are not making any compromises on curriculum mm-hmm. on syllabus on what our country has defined that is why our children have an advantage i can do all of these things and yet i can go to those entrance exams i can crack them i can get a rank i can be in colleges that i want and it's amazing to see like this year we had two nid ranks right and that's so difficult to crack and we had one of the children who didn't go to nid mm-hmm. and that's so unheard of like you get a rank and you don't go because she said no i found another college which is a smaller college but has a program that i want mm-hmm. has a faculty that has promised me something that i have asked to be taught and nid will not do that for me mm-hmm. you know and that is the clarity that we want children to have and we are blessed with orinco parents who said if this is what she feels and this is her gut feeling we will go by it mm-hmm. you know and this is a child who worked two years hard enough to get that seat right so that's that's how it should be about raising children we are there to envelop around them we are there to support them as they walk it is their path and we will enable unlock things for them as they grow right that's that's the way of our inquiry actually so we will end the first part of this uh, series as in the nios school or an introduction or uh, we learned that it's a board and not a school so that is coming to an end and we will catch you in the next episode of this series thank you thank you for watching if you have any questions please leave them in the comments and we'll get back to you please like the video and subscribe to the channel to encourage more such content thank you